Hi everyone, it's Tuesday and it's about five o'clock here in Italy. Uh, today we're going to talk about three main things. We're going to talk about considerations when moving to Italy. We're going to talk about, do you hear the bells in the convent next to us? We're going to talk about uh, the weather in Italy and when to come to Italy, ideally. And we're gonna talk about status of projects in the Palazzo. Hopefully you can still hear me with all the bells going on. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about moving to Italy. Everyone wants to move to Italy, not everyone, but a lot of people. It's a big topic, big theme on social. And why do they wanna to move to Italy? Food, wine, culture, art, scenery, pace of life, and those things are all true, but as I've mentioned before, they're a tiny part of actually living in Italy. So, they are a part. Here I am drinking wine. This is a local wine from Argile, Panata. It's delicious. It's an Orvieto do Classico Superiore. And um, it's really funny that those bells started right as I was starting the video. Um, so those things are all great and true, and you can kind of coast on those things if you come for less than six months. But if you come to Italy to live for more than six months, there's other things that you have to consider. And we've talked to them in about, we've talked about them in depth on other calls. The personal considerations aside from learning the language, which is really important, and aside from budget, choosing a place that fits your budget, are socialization, how are you gonna make friends? And that's really tied to your language skills. Are you gonna be in an expat community? Is that gonna be your world expat? And that's fine, but that's a choice. You need to be aware that that's gonna be a choice before you come to Italy, meaning most of your friends are going to be English speaking. Uh, healthcare, um, yep, it's free if you don't mind waiting. And most people mind waiting. <laughs> and so most people pay for healthcare. The other thing is it's all in Italian. Um, in the bigger cities, you'll find some English speaking services, but it's not gonna be like at home in your home country. Uh, okay, taxes, obviously you need to talk to a, an accountant um, because it's not simple. Every type of work is taxed differently. So, I'm not even gonna go into it because uh, the experts barely understand it, but it's a, that for that reason, it's a big consideration. And then driver's license. Driver's license, well, let's talk about that for a minute. So um, in Italy, once you have residency for a year, you can no longer use a, a foreign driver's license. You must get an Italian driver's license. And the test is extremely difficult. They try to trick you. We've talked about this in the past. Um, I became a crazy person studying for that test um, and I passed on the first time, which I'm really proud of and really happy about because I did not want to have to take it again. There were 40 questions, you can only get four wrong and I got two wrong. So I got 38 out of 40 on the first time and I'm really happy about that. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of expats either choose not to drive. Okay, I'm moving to Italy, I just won't drive because I won't be able to pass that test. It's a written test. I won't be able to pass that test because it's all in Italian and it's really difficult and I don't want to study for it, so I just won't drive. That's a choice. You can make that choice, but it, it's gonna limit you as to where you can go. Like, yes, you can go anywhere the train goes and that's fine, but it's a different way of life, not driving. Uh, there are also a lot of people who continue to drive on their foreign license without getting an Italian driver's license. And that, you can play that game. I played that game for about two, three years until the police, because they stop you regularly, even if you're not doing anything wrong here, they stop you regularly and they'd be like, Ellen, like, you can't keep driving on this license. You've had your residency officially for a couple years now, two, three years, you need to get it. And so, you know, at a certain point, the game's gonna be up and you need to get an Italian license. So, you know, people are like, oh, I'll just keep using my American license or whatever. Um, at a certain point, the jig's up. So those are really important considerations. Those are personal considerations. Then there are what I like to call responsible citizen considerations. So things like 
being aware of Italian politics, which is not fun at all. It's terrible, it's boring and hard to understand, but you need to have an awareness of what's going on because otherwise you're living in a bubble and that's not really smart. Um, awareness of problems in Italy. So it's not just food, wine, art, paradise. There are significant problems in Italy that most expats choose to ignore. So things like the economy, which has been in a free dive for several years now. Corruption, which we all have seen for the past couple years. That's why the super bonus, the Cento Dieci, has caused mass problems in multiple industries and with works that people are doing on their houses, also ours. Um, lack of free press. This is a big one, guys. So lack of free press, think about that. You can't just write whatever you want. And this actually impacts us because in the book that, I'm, that I translated and published in English, largely for the American market and the British market, I could put things in that book that I can't put in the Italian version. It's illegal to put them in the Italian version. So that's a big consideration. Like, I think you just need to not fall into the trap that, oh, Italy, it's Europe, it's progressive, it's open-minded. Mm, sometimes on some things, but it has like the 60th uh, best free press in the world. The United States is 30 and the first one, two, three, four countries are Scandinavian countries. So it, it's not good. It's not a good situation. Just being aware of that, be, knowing that, um, is important. It's important to know these things if this is the country you're living in. So obviously we choose to be in Italy. We have family here. I am half Italian. My husband's 100% Italian. Uh, and we choose to be here for now. But, you know, we're aware of these things. And I think it's all, it's sometimes surprising when I realize that people who didn't grow up here, like myself, I didn't grow up here, but I try to inform myself on the current state of the real situation that is in Italy. Um, so they, but they don't know, they live in a bubble. It's just food, art, wine, progressive country. And it's, it's really not, it's really not. So you need to be careful. So those are my considerations. That's the first topic, considerations. Second thing. So I'm gonna kick off with word of the day, afa, afa, afa. Anyone know what that means? It means hot humidity. There's like a cap, a cloud cap on the in the sky that holds the heat down. And that's what we've been having the past few days. It's very hot. We've had record heat. Yesterday was the hottest day on record in Rome. 40 degrees was never recorded ever in June in Rome. And so um, it's a problem. That's another problem that the the climate in Italy is changing drastically and it's of great concern to us. So we've been having a drought, probably if you watched my videos, you know, we've been having a drought for more than a year now. Uh, we have a farm, we produce olive oil, we produce grapes for wine, and it's of enormous concern. So yeah. That leads me to when to come to Italy. When to come to Italy. So September through March are good. September through March are good because it's generally cool. Uh, generally, it's shoulder to low season. It's not high season. Uh, April and May are okay, but risky for crowds. June, July, and August are risky for heat. Like right now in June, it's gonna be 37, 36 degrees. These are temperatures over 100 degrees. Um, or almost 100 degrees. Uh, so risk for heat, risk for massive amounts of tourists. We had a friends who left the other day and they said, Ellen, we're never coming back to Rome in the summer, never. It was just too crowded. It was too crowded, too hot, not pleasant. Um, so risk for heat, risk for crowds and high prices. So you're gonna pay the highest prices in the summer, which is high season. I never understood why summer was high season in Italy. It seemed like the reverse, like, I think I should pay the lowest price for the worst experience, <laughs> right? And the highest price for the best experience. Okay, so anyway, that's when to come to Italy. Uh, sadly, we are here almost all summer. 
because of all the works on the palazzo, which I'm gonna to get to the palazzo in a moment. Uh, we have to be around because there's so much going on. Finally, they picked up with the work again and there's so much going on on the palazzo that we just have to be here. That's how it works in Italy. Um, we're gonna go for a week to, we're gonna go to France for a week, but, and then we're gonna go to America. But um, for the most part, we're here chained to, to our house because of the works. In the future, we plan on not being in Italy in the summer because it's just, we don't enjoy it. It's too hot and um, you can't really do anything during the day. You can do stuff in the morning until like 10 and then you can do stuff in the evenings. But during the day, you're kind of inside and it's just not, it's not fun. Okay, so that's when to come to Italy and kind of what's going on with the weather here. Last topic, status of projects in the Palazzo. So we're finishing the roof this week. Cheers, I'm so excited. I'll drink to that. We're finishing the roof this week on this huge, enormous Palazzo, ancient Palazzo. Uh, so that's like a huge landmark for us, milestone for us. And the rest of the summer will be occupied with redoing the garage, doing the interiors of the upstairs apartments, doing the garden, the elevator. Uh, some of these things are gonna drift into October, of course. We expect our target, which it's dangerous to have a target in Italy because it's almost always wrong. Even towards the end, it's almost always wrong. But our target anyway is like January, March, that we'll have everything done. So, so that's really exciting. Uh, that's our update. Please continue to send me questions about what's going on in projects in the Palazzo. And we, we do have a video coming out with all of this footage of the work, but we had to change video software. So I'm still learning the new software and I, I appreciate your patience as I do that. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Happy Tuesday and cheers. Bye everybody.